So we just showed you how to do the visual acuity with the Snellen chart. The next thing we're going to do is what's called testing visual fields. This is not something you're going to do on most patients, but it is one of the tools in your toolbox. So what you're going to do is you're going to stand about two feet away from the patient. You're going to take your hands facing you, and you want them a little bit closer to you than to your patient. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold up some fingers. So what you do is I want you to cover one eye, and I'm going to close that same, that <laughs> same side eye. And what I want you to do is look straight at me. I want you to tell me how many fingers you see. Two and one. Right. And how many fingers do you see? Two and one. Okay. How, how about now? Two and two. Okay. All right. Now let's try the other side. I right, can close this eye. And tell me how many fingers you see. One. One. And how many fingers do you see? Two. One. Okay. Uh, so the idea is sometimes someone will have a blind spot where they can't see in a certain visual field. Again, you're not normally going to do this, but it may be something you'll see a doctor do, or maybe something you do if you're out in the field, in the community, or in a foreign country. And next, we're going to move on with the rest of the eye exam. So we're going to inspect the eyes themselves. We're going to inspect the pupils. Now, pupils should be equal in size. They should be round as opposed to oval or squares or little daggers. We're not cats. Um, and the next thing is reactive to light. So as part of your neuro exam, you shined a light in the patient's eyes, so, and you looked for them to, die, to constrict. Are you in on the eyes? Oh, I can be. Closer. <laughs> now the technique, you want to use the light from the side and just turn your hand so that the light goes into her eye. And you should see the eyes, the pupils constrict. Now, stay on that same eye. If you shine the light in the other eye, that other pupil should constrict. So when I shine the light on the eye and it constricts, we call that direct, cons direct constriction. When we do the other eye and that eye constricts, we call that consensual constriction. All right, now come back, please. All right, look straight ahead at me. What you do is you're going to shine the light straight in their eyes, and what you're looking for is you're looking for the light to reflect in both pupils in the same spot. And what that's going to do is it's going to indicate that your patient's eyes are tracking together. So if you see the, the light reflecting in different spots, it might be a sign that your patient has lazy eye or has, is cross-eyed or wall-eyed. Um, so you want to check that. That's called light corneal light reflex because it's the light is reflecting off the cornea. When you do this and the patient's eyes constrict, that's called pupillary light reflex. So you have corneal light reflex when light reflects off the cornea, and then you have pupillary light reflex when their con pupils constrict. Um, last thing we're going to do with this part of the eyes constricting is we're going to have the patient focus on our finger or off in the distance, and now focus as I get closer. Now you should see the eyes will converge together. The eyes will converge together, but they'll also constrict. That constriction is called accommodation. So the way you're going to document that is PERLA, P-E-R-R-L-A. Pupils are equal and round, we already did that, reactive to light, and accommodation, where the eyes the pupils constrict. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to look through the ophthalmoscope and we're going to look for what's mm -hmm. called the, the red reflex. Now the way this thing works, you'll notice that it is a big round dot. This little uh, dial right here selects the shape of your light. There's green light, there's one with a slit, you know, one with little uh, crosshairs on it. What you want is the big dot. The next thing you'll notice is that this collar right here selects the brightness of our light. So what you want is a fairly bright light. Now this is best done in a darkened room, so I'm going to turn the light out for a moment. And the reason for that is it's going to help their eyes to dilate so you can look inside them. Now the technique is you're going to use same side, same side, same side. So what I'm going to do is my right eye, her right eye, my right hand. All right, so just look off into the distance. I want you to focus on those flowers over there. Mm. Uh, keep both of your eyes open. 
put your hand on their shoulder or forehead so you have an idea of how far away you are. <laughs> and what you're going to do is you're going to look from the, di oh, this is also a focus ring. If, both, if you have normal vision, you should start with it on zero. Um, if you have vision that's bad, find where it's focused when you first look through it, and that's where you should start. But you take your glasses off, you take the patient's glasses off when you do this. So look through it, and you should see their eye, and begin to move in. And as you move in, you'll need to focus, and you actually be able to see the um, you actually will see the blood vessels in her eye. Now, what we want, all we care about at this level, is when you look in her eye first, you'll see red reflect off the back of the retina. At that point, you can be done. But if you want to try and see the blood vessels, you can go ahead and try and do that as well. But that's for your um, convenience. That's for your edification, not part of the class. And again, on the other side. All right.